Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for signing in with me today. There are five people signed up to this class, but I believe some people are just um, going to get the replay because they weren't free. So it is, it is time. It is three o'clock. So let's get going. Um, I have got the videos off and the sound off right now so that we can concentrate on what's happening here. Um, so the way that you can pop in and ask me questions is through the little Zoom group chat. Shoot, bleh, Zoom group chat here. Um, I've got this up and I can see any questions that you ask me. Um, I will talk a lot, uh, but please just pop in and ask me questions at any time. The more questions, the better. So today we're gonna to be doing beach waves and I've got my beautiful Judy head. Uh, this is my favorite Judy head ever because she has shoulders and a hell of a lot of hair and it's a lovely color. Um, and it's really cool because when you, um, you know, you can do a little style on her and pop a cardigan on her or something and then take a photo and she looks like a real person. So for your Instagram photos, especially now while we're in isolation and we don't have anyone we can actually use um, to practice on or to produce photos uh, for our um, social media, she's great. So I will send you guys a link to like all of my favorite stuff after this as well, as, long, as well as the replay. All right, so beach waves. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of beach waves, but to me, beach waves are the really textured kind of messy ones uh, that go in different directions. Just like the photo that um, I used uh, to promote this class today. Um, I do find when a customer asks me for beach waves, I always double check because some people think that beach waves are the uh, kind of like Hollywood waves that are all brushed out and they're all going in one direction. Um, so obviously if that's what your customer is expecting, it is very different to um, beach waves where they're all going in, in a different direction. So just clarify, always assume that your customer doesn't really know what they're talking about because they usually don't. They're, they're asking for something, but they don't know what uh, the professional definition of that is. So beach waves, we're going in different directions. I will show you guys some of my favorite products as we go along. I'm sure you have your own, but I'm always experimenting with different products. Um, with regards to hair prep, I honestly don't really do too much. If I am running my hands through the person's hair and it's feeling like it's freshly washed or their hair is very fine and it's very fly away, I may just do a light spray all over of my favorite uh, working spray, which is the Moroccan oil medium uh, strength hairspray. I like this because it's a hairspray that you can pop in the hair and it just kind of adds a little grit to the hair but you can completely brush it through and the Moroccan oil in it also um, just smooths the hair a little bit too so it helps me with frizzies. So I do like that. Um, I do like to use a heat protector although I do not have a favorite heat protector. Um, right now I've got this Joico uh, brightening veil blonde um, I honestly bought it because it's called Brightening Veil, vale, and that is kind of relevant to weddings. <laughs> veil. Vale. Um, and it says UV and thermal defense multitasker. Um, I'm not a hairdresser. I am a makeup artist background. I don't cut and color. So I must admit my, my deep product knowledge is probably not the same as someone who actually went to a hair school for two years and does cuts and colors and everything. Um, I've just been experimenting with products as I go through time and finding what works for the majority of people. Um, I don't have a favorite heat protector. I'm always experimenting um, because I find it difficult to know whether it's good or not. You're just spraying it on there to protect the hair. Um, so I do spray it, because you're supposed to, you know. So I spray a decent amount, pop it all in there, brush it through with a paddle brush. And this also just gives me an opportunity to kind of like touch the customer's hair and, you know, assess what type of hair I'm working with. Um, if their hair is still super fly away, I might use a little bit of like an oil in my hands just to run through the ends to try and smooth it out and get rid of some of that fly away, fly away feel. I can't stand fly aways. Um, again, kind of experimenting with um, smoothing creams and smoothing oils, but I have been using the Moroccan oil, oil treatment um, and I find that it works. Uh, will I buy it again? I'll probably keep experimenting. There are some products that I'm like, I'll never buy anything else. And then there's other products that I'm like, I'll keep experimenting. <laughs> um, in terms of the iron, 
I really like Hot Tools. Um, Hot Tools are affordable. They have every single style of tool that you could imagine. And this one is actually extra long. Uh, which I find amazing for beach waves, especially because some people like their waves tighter and some people want them looser. So depending on how closely I wrap it or how, much, how far apart I wrap the hair on this will change the, um, how tight the wave is. And it's also really good for people who have super, super long hair. A lot of the time you can't fit the hair onto the iron. Um, so I love this. Um, I generally always use a one inch for pretty much everything um yeah I, I just i just find um bigger you there's a lot of people whose hair doesn't hold curl very well so i find if you use an iron that's much bigger than this um you're risking it just falling out really really fast i find that if i tie if i curl it a bit tighter with my one inch and i just brush it out to loosen it that it lasts longer than if i do it with a big one and then brush it out and i've lost it all um, having said that, I do have some customers that like that really, really loose look, uh, which in that case, I'd probably use a one and a quarter, one and a half inch max. Anything bigger than that, I just don't find it really works. Hi, Chester. My little puppy is um, come to say hi. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to move the camera down a little bit. I'm going to work on her now. You'll see more of her and less of me. So there is this technique, actually me again. Um, there is a technique that I learned in a class with Kevin Murphy. Um, they have some really unique techniques, um, especially with hair sewing. Um, I want to show you the technique that they showed me because I find that it's really awesome uh, for beach waves. There is a technique to it. Okay, so we're going to section off about one, one and a half inch of hair thick. Of course, how much hair that you're going to put into your iron depends on how thick each strand of hair is. If someone's ha hair is really, really fine, you can put more hair in the iron and do this quicker. Um, but if the hair is really thick and, you know, you put it in the iron and the heat isn't traveling through it, then you need thinner sections. So assess the section size based on that. But generally, we're going about, I'd say, like an inch and a half thick. I always promote working in um, neat sections. Having said that, if it is a rush, if I'm in a rush, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, but neat sections is good. And so the technique with this basically is we're gonna be working in triangles. Let's actually go a little bit thicker so that you guys can see the triangle, the triangle action much clearer. Okay, let's go a little bit. All right. These clips are the best. There's lots of different kinds of them, but it's just the type of clip that is amazing. Boop, boop. Okay, so what we're gonna do, my iron is nice and hot, and we are going to section off a triangle shape. And so working in triangles is basically gonna mean when you brush this out, there's no even though the curls are going in all different um, directions, there's no major separation between your curls. Uh, what temperature do you normally set the iron to? The highest, always the highest. I never set it any less. Um, the only time I would set it less would be if someone had really, really, really damaged hair, like super bleach blonde, and they were concerned about it and I was concerned about it, you know, when they've got it so damaged that it's like breaking at the roots. Other than that, to the, to the highest. Um, which on this iron is 430, I believe. It's either 430 or 450. Um, yeah, I, I just find the more heat, the better. The, it's the heat that makes it stay. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna brush it through and my Judy has been used a couple times so she's a little bit naughty. <laughs> my husband always laughs when I say the word naughty. So detangler brush. Those knots out, you don't want to pop your iron on there with knots. Um, if she is frizzy or wavy or curly at the root, we're going to flat iron the root before we do anything else. Your curling iron is not going to smooth out that root, so make sure to give her a little flat iron at the root if she's curly, wavy or frizzy. Then I like to use a little of my favorite product, uh, texture powder. I like the uh, Puff Me powder by Design Me. I just like that it sprays. 
there are um, a couple more that spray now too. In terms of the formula, I find that they're all the same. Um, I really do. Um, they've got to be one. To me, the formula is exactly the same as this um, and everything else. You can pay a lot of money or you can go somewhere in the middle like this. So I'm gonna spray it on there. This is just gonna change the texture of the hair and hold my back combing. Give it a little back comb. I always find just giving it a little back comb at the roots just makes it so most people want volume. And even if you give them volume and they decide they don't want volume, you just brush it out. Um, but I find if you just put the volume in the top, it ends up being big on the top and then it's kind of like flat down here. You can actually give it a little back comb here and it's gonna make it voluminous top to bottom. It's just a better shape. You make the most of your volume. Okay, so just a little back comb, doesn't need to be nuts. And it's all in the curling technique. So we're gonna do every single one in a different direction. I'm opening my iron, or if you have a wand, you know, you obviously don't need to do that. And we are wrapping it so that it is roping, it's twisting and it's roping on the iron. And like I was saying to you guys earlier, if I wrap it like, like tight, all these pieces are all close to each other, I've wrapped them close together, that's gonna to create a tight wave. Whereas if I wrap them with gaps in between, it's gonna make a loose, looser wave. And again, you only really have the benefits when you have um, this, long, this long iron. Um, and in terms of how long do you hold the hair on, to, on the, um, hold the iron on the hair, as long as it takes for the heat to travel through. Um, if you don't have time to set the whole head, that's fine. A lot of the time you don't need to. Um, and setting the hair really does take up time. So yes, if this is a bride and you want it to be perfect, she's paying a lot of money, you can go through and you can pin up every single one so that they cool down in this form. And then when you let them out, they are gonna be like the longest lasting waves that you can find. But it's just not always necessary, I find. Okay, so we've got our triangle going this way. And we're gonna do our triangle, our next triangle going the other way. So I've got my next triangle here. Detangler. If she's wavy, give her a little flat iron at the root there. A little powder, puff powder. Small amount of back comb at the roots. And then this time, we're gonna curl in the opposite direction. So last time I put my iron over the top here. This time I'm gonna put it under here. And we're gonna do the same thing. So if I wanted it to be loose, I could wrap it with gaps in the middle like that. And so basically when you wrap it, like don't let go of the piece of hair, it should naturally, if you don't let go of it, you don't let it slide between your fingers, it should just naturally rope and twist in, in your hands. You don't want the hair to lay flat on the iron. If it lays flat on the iron, you're gonna come out with a little ringlet rather than when we brush this ringlet out, it's going to be a wave. Okay, so I can do two more sections here. I'm being lazy and I'm not going to use my decorate, my, my uh, comb. Okay, just get any of those nuts out. Is anybody following along with me on a Judy head? Or a sister or a brother or a fiance who has long hair or anything funny like that? Back combing at the roots. And this time we're going over the top again. So on top and we are wrapping it like a rope. So I would say like up to 30 seconds is like generally how long you can leave the, the iron on the hair if you need to, but you don't always need to. Just watching. My duty was terrible. <laughs> yeah, you should get this one. I'll send you the link. It's, it's amazing. Everybody asks me where I got this one. Mine, uh, my other one is just the one that you get at, at school at Blanche and like, they've got like barely any hair. <laughs> it's like they've got alopecia or something. Okay, so remember which direction you went in. This time I'm putting my iron underneath and it's 
twisting in whoops, towards me. So if I'm not setting it, I'm not gonna pin it up. I just tend to just hold it in my hands for a little bit. Then at least it can cool down a little bit like this and then I will let it go. Um, in most cases, I will give the hair just a little bit of a spritz as I go through. Um, this hairspray is also one of my favorites. I love this one because it saves space in your kit. Um, it is, again, from the same line, Design Me. I love this line. We carry this on my website. Um, Hold Me, three-way hairspray. It actually has three different settings. I don't know if it's so light, medium, and heavy hold. So you can actually just twist it and change it to the setting that you want it to be, rather than having to carry a gazillion different hairsprays. So I tend to just carry that one and the Moroccan oil one, because the Mor Moroccan oil one is different. It has Moroccan oil in it. All right, so we're just gonna move on to the next section and it's just gonna be repeating. Um, so if you guys have questions, fire away. Um, otherwise, unfortunately, repetition is kind of boring. And it gets, it gets different when we get to the end, when we start to um, use product for the rest of the head. For the finishing, it's all in the finishing bits. All right, so it doesn't really matter where you start, but again, we're gonna go, we're separating it in the triangles. And the triangles don't have to be tiny. Like I'm doing smaller ones just to kind of show you. Um, if someone wants it like really, really textured, you can go small. Um, obviously the smaller the sections, the more textured it's gonna be, but um, they, they, can, they don't have to be tiny. So long as the heat is actually traveling through the hair, every time that you curl the hair, you need to just test it with your finger carefully. I've burned myself a million times and just test it and make sure that that heat has come through the hair and then it's ready. It's cooked. Okay, so decide what direction you're gonna go in. I'm gonna go over the top with this one. I was considering doing half of the hair first so that you guys didn't get bored watching me do the same thing for like half an hour, but I don't know. I've also done half of the, the style before people sign in and they're like, what? how did you do the rest? So I figured I'd do the whole thing. You guys, if you get bored, just what, make, a, make a cup of coffee or wine or whatever you drink at this time, I guess. Okay, so I've got my triangle and I'm gonna do my triangle coming this way now. Restaurants in our community are struggling right now. Uber Eats is offering zero dollar delivery fee to make it easy for you to support them. Uber Eats is automatically waiving the delivery fee when you order from local restaurants on the app. A little just bit of, keep local data oops, the Uber Eats app just spread that all over me. Now I am going to be very textured. Okay, so this one, does the stand come with the head? No, the, the head comes with the table stand. Um, this stand actually goes to the floor. Um, I'll send you the link to the stand too because it's amazing. Like I'm, I'm sitting right now because I'm lazy, but um, you like being able to stand up and do the customer's hair is actually awesome. Or, or not the customer, Judy's hair. Judy's hair. This is Judy, not a customer. Okay, so that one went away from me. So this one's going to come towards me. Oops. Oh, oh. Oopsie. Apparently I accidentally loosened her head. There we go. My bad. Where is my section? Okay, perfect. We're back. We're back where we were. Okay, so this one's going to come towards me. Yeah, funnil funnily enough, before I bought this Judy head and the stand, I never used to practice on my Judy head at all. But it's just so much easier and more enjoyable, and and like. I find if you take a photo of that, that gross Judy head with no hair, the, the brunette one that we got in um, makeup school, I find that it just looks awful in photos. Whereas this one looks legit good in photos. Like I've got some really cool, um, really cool styles out of this one. So this one, that last one came towards me. I, I do find still with the beach waves, my front pieces 
I almost always curl them away from the face. So even if, like this one's coming towards me, so I'm gonna curl this one away from her face anyway. But if it just so happened to be that this one was going away, I would still curl this one away. I just find that um, curling the front pieces away from the face looks so much more flattering on pretty much everyone. And I find if you curl the curls towards the face, it gives it much more of a vintage look, which a lot of people don't like because unless you're like mega stunning, it mostly just ages you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it just, it just, yeah. Lighter hair just looks better in photos. All right, so we've done that bit. Moving on here. So my triangle was coming this way. My tri next triangle is gonna go this way. Doesn't have to be tiny pieces. Doesn't have to be perfect sections. Obviously when Kevin Murphy taught me, they did do perfect sections. You should teach things properly, but I, I don't know. I always think that, you know, you learn the rules, you break the rules. It really doesn't make a difference if it's not perfect. Okay, so that one is going away. So this one is gonna to come towards me. And it will get a little bit different when we get to the top of the head, just to make sure that the crown looks perfect. At some point you have to figure out where your volume's gonna be, where your part's gonna be, make sure the crown looks good. Those are all bits that make you a professional. Your, your style looks more professional. Twisting her around, I sliced it this way, it's gonna slice this way now. And this one is gonna go that way. Away. Have you guys managed to keep yourself busy while in the isolation? Has anyone taken on any new jobs or done anything interesting? I'm, I've just been doing this. <laughs> I've been sat here on Zoom. This is all I know, styling hair and makeup. I'm like, you know, take that away from me. I don't know what to do. Oh, if you can't drink a lot of cocktails. I know, I think, I know, I totally agree. Oh man. Yesterday it got to 5.30 p.m. and my husband and I looked at us and we were like, so are we trying to like set a record of like the latest we start drinking? <laughs> Terrible. So bad. Whatever. We have nothing like really to wake up for. Or, you know, I do love a good glass of wine. <laughs> so this, like if someone doesn't have a lot of hair, if they have fine hair, I can get this hairstyle done in 20 minutes. I never think that you should do a hairstyle in less than half an hour unless it's short hair, just because, I mean, I charge what I charge. I don't want people to, like I think for a non-bridal down hairstyle, we charge $80. So if someone did my curls in 20 minutes and I paid $80, I would probably be feeling like I got cheated. Um, so I, I always think even if the hair's, you know, you can tell it's not gonna take long, just, take your time a little bit and half an hour is kind of your minimum. I mean, especially considering we're competing with, um, I mean, at least in the city. Um, I know, um, Kirsten, you live further away, but in the city we're competing with like Glow, who are charging $50 for a wash, dry, and a style, you know, so we have to make it so that people actually um, see, see the value in us. And especially because most women can curl their own hair. So you have to show them that you can curl it that much better than them. Okay, we're gonna do another row and then this top bit, we're gonna do a little bit different. So again, as long as it's mostly an, a straight line, then you're good. And triangles. Bio, it's not worth it, it doesn't last. Yeah, I mean, 
I worked at bio and the only time my clients washed their hair was when I did. Oh my God. Is, is bio, like I haven't heard of bio. Is bio like another blow type place? I've not heard of that one. It is bio, not bi. Oh, blow. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. <laughs> Apparently I'm losing the ability to read in isolation too. Yeah. Yeah, some people come and they get that. That's, that's their thing. Like they never wash their own hair. They get it done. They get it washed and blow dried by a professional. I, I, know, I know that's like, I feel like that's a very old fashioned thing to do too. Like um, in England, there's lots of more mature ladies who don't blow, don't wash their own hair. How lovely to have the time and the money to not wash my own hair. I would love that because I hate blow drying my hair. I hate it. I never do a good job. But yeah, I did have my hair done at blow two, on two occasions, I think. And and it, it was it was good, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think that it really lasts for me. Some people it really does. They would come back before myself. Oh my god. Oh that doesn't sound very fun. Yeah. Well that's the thing, the people who don't wanna wash and blow dry their own hair are the people who have difficult hair. And it's a lot of work. Yeah. I, I hate doing blowouts. Like, it's not my thing. I will pass that on to anybody else. I don't want the work. <laughs> Somebody else do it. The workout. Yeah, I had um, someone who had, like, she was Brazilian and she had, like, curly, curly, curly mounds of hair. Oh, it took two hours just to straighten it with a straightening iron because um, it, was, it was mobile. It wasn't, like, somewhere I could wash her and blow dry her hair and curl it. It took two hours. Oh, pop. <laughs> About a boy, have I seen that? I think I have. <laughs> wow, crazy. Yeah. Is it like, a, that's like an old fashioned move, like a, based in the olden times. I could be wrong. No. <laughs> I should stop pretending like I, I've heard of it. <laughs> I remember that one, I swear. Yeah, British, I know, I remember it being a British one. Okay, so that one's, so, so this one, where I've landed, this one is coming away from the face, but I'm still gonna curl this one away from the face, just because I find that it looks much better. So we're brushing out, brushing out those waves. My gosh, I wore, it, wore a jumper, but, we don't really have much air in this place and it's hot with the hot irons. Boiling. Okay, so this one is going away from the face still. We're just gonna do two pieces away from the face. And if I've taken a bigger chunk, like I've taken a bigger chunk this time, I just have to leave the iron on for longer. Honestly, sometimes I realize I've taken way too big of a chunk of hair and I'm there for like a minute like the heat's gonna come through eventually <laughs> it will come through eventually but try not to use pieces uh, chunks of hair that it takes longer than about 30 seconds for it to come through the result is just not as good I'm gonna twist her around all right where am I I'm here. Just reposition her, perfect. Okay, this one, so I've cut it this way, so I'm gonna slice it this way. We're using diagonal sections, so that's a bit thin. Waste of time to do it thin when you don't have to. Um, the triangle sections make it so that, because each of the curls are going in different directions, it just makes it so that when you blend it, um, the, they, they blend together and they don't just end up like totally separate. It helps with the blending. It's the, uh, the, the, pow the powder and the uh, back combing that gives the, the volume. And I will, I will show you guys setting the top of the head too. 
because I do always do it differently on the top. So this one needs a bit of a bigger amount of time here. Kirsten, are you still, um, are you still doing, what well, were you still doing uh, hair and makeup at Williams Lake? Williams Lake that you live, right? More sections. Yeah. Do you find that it's like busier because there's less competition in that area? I don't know, I don't know the place. I just for some reason thought it was more of a small town type place. Skincare and waxing, ooh, nice. Ugh, yeah, same for me, I know, it sucks. Next year is going to be absolutely crazy. Brandon and I are actually postponing starting a family because of the, the postponement of bridal season. Can't afford to not be able to work. Yeah, yeah, totally, I can imagine. It's, it's even hard in the city just to do hair and makeup. It all ties in though, doing facials and waxing, that all ties in. All right, so this one's coming back and this is gonna be my last one. So that one's still gonna come back too. Oh, you're getting married next year. I didn't know that. And you, are you postponing to next year or are you keeping it in September? Some people are hopeful about September. Uh, 2021, okay, yeah. You've got time for this to, to brush over. Was the date always September 2021 or did you have to move it to that date? Congratulations, by the way. It truly is the best day ever. <laughs> okay, so at this point, you know, we're about two rows above the ears, about where the temple is. This is kind of around the time when I want to decide where her um, parting is going to be, whether it's a middle part, side part, really side part. Um, I find with beach waves, anything looks good. Um, I would just say with the center part, it looks good on some people, um, but it's very bohemian, so it works. I don't know, some people just, it depends on your face shape. Let's do a center part for her. So I'm just gonna slice the hair. Oh my gosh, she's full of back comb from, from previous lesson. Should have probably washed her. You're getting washed next time, Missy. Let me just, it's just gonna take a second because I'm basically having to rip out the back comb in. <laughs> Luckily, she's not a real person. Okay, let's say, make it a little better than that. Okay, so basically we want to know where the parting goes. She's going to do center. Cool. And then however much hair we're going to bring, uh, brush back and curl in that direction is going to determine how much crown volume we get. I find with the beach waves, it's not really about the crown, crown volume. It's about the all over volume. Um, so I'm going to leave her part like fairly big. You know, maybe like I'd say that's like two inches, two and a half inches, obviously, depending on how much hair she has. And then the rest of this, I'm gonna brush it back and we're gonna curl that back. So it's always good just to kind of like map out what shape you're gonna be creating here. Okay. So starting in the back, I always start in the back. Okay, so the hair here, we're gonna bring all this back. Hang on, let me just pop her head back a little bit. One moment. Okay, 
So we're going to start bringing the hair back from here. So the amount of hair I've got here is too much, way too much to go in the one section. Um, so I'm just going to section off a horizontal piece here in the back and join it on the sides. And twist it around here. The truth about Judy and trying to get through the back climbing. There we go. That will do. That will be good enough. If she had clean hair, we could do that a bit neater. All right, so this is where we want to just think about adding a little extra volume. So we can still work in those triangle sections. Hang on, that should actually be a little bit thicker. Una momento. Let me just make it a little thicker. No sense in doing tiny sections when you don't have to. We're trying to move on to the to the next customer, our lineup of customers that we have right now. Okay, so a triangle section. And if your customer wants lots of volume, set the top of the hair. If they don't, you probably don't need to, and you can get the volume out of the um, the back combing. So for practicing purposes, let's set it. One second, I left my duck clips over here. Can't live without these little mini duck clips in my kit. Okay, so we've got my triangle section here, starting in the center at the back. I always find that that's the best. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're going to pull the hair high to the sky. Spray the underneath. If you really want mega volume, you can go in and spray a little hairspray too. I just find that combination of two products really works. And then I'm actually gonna switch to my teasing and smoothing brush. Can't live without this either. And I am going to create a bit more of a nest. I find that this brush creates a little bit more of a nest. Like even just that, it's like, boop. I mean, obviously she's Judy, so it's different. <laughs> Her hair does hold anything, but even with the customer, you'll get the same result. So I've got it high to the sky. I'm popping my heat just on the back combing there, just rubbing it. And then we're just gonna curl this one underneath with the same wrapping technique. And just wait until the heat comes through. Just try and touch, touch a little bit with your finger and try not to burn yourself. And when that heat has really come through, that's when it's ready. Slide it off the iron. Off your iron over there. Take your little duck clip. And we're going to pin, pin it up. Okay? And because we want the beach waves, we're going to use the same... Um, switching directions technique. I don't know why, but there's like no hair on this side. Hang on one sec. Judy, where is your hair? Okay, so now we're on to the side. I'm just gonna bring her head up a little. Perfect. Great. Never quite work out which bits twist which bits. Okay. There we go. Okay. We're on to the sides. Looks like I sliced inwards, so I'm going to slice diagonal again. And do same big of a brush it high to the sky. So this one it needs to curl in that direction, the opposite direction, but we still want to give it the heat and the back combing under here. So we're spraying that hair powder under there. I like to add a little hairspray. Why not? 
the more product, the better. Uh, teething brush. And we're making a little bit of a nest here. We're still holding the hair high to the sky. And then we're just applying the heat here. And I find that the heat really locks in that volume and back combing. And then you can still go ahead and pop the iron on top and curl in the opposite direction. So you're just kind of creating your, your longer, long lasting volume in a slightly different way. And, oops. I'm using um, my husband's piano as a table. <laughs> Slightly awkward. But this is what we have to do in our home studios. All right, so pin, pinning it up. So the difference between that one, this one are curled underneath, this one are curled going up, and it's gonna give you, it's basically, I did it in exactly the same as this, but we're spraying the hair powder, the hairspray, we're holding the hair high to the sky, back combing with the teasing brush, and then we're holding the iron uh, the heat of the iron at the root while the hair is up and then we're curling it when it's in an upward position too and that's what's going to give you the volume so i've got my last piece here it would come forward but because i like the pieces going back i'm just going to do this one going backwards too give it a little brush up high to the sky hair powder at the root hair spray at the root Teasing brush with the hair high to the sky and give it a good back comb there. With the very front pieces, just make sure not to back comb too much in the front because we don't want the back comb to show, of course. Um, just brush it out if you've accidentally done that. Take your iron. Hair is still high to the sky. You just pop in the heat here for a little bit, just really setting those roots up. And then we can take the iron on top and curl away from the face still. If you've got some little flyaways hanging about, again, really careful, but you can kind of tuck, tuck any of the little flyaways into your iron while you wait for the heat to travel through the hair. And we will pin it up. Okay, so it's a bit of, bit of a different kind of set. So let's continue. And yeah, I only do this, I only usually bother to do this for like, if someone, if it's a bride, absolutely. If someone really wants volume, volume, volume. You know, I get some of those people that want their hair so huge. But you don't always need to. I'm just gonna speed up the process a little bit more now. Back coming here. And so this one came under, so this one is gonna go that way. Okay, I did my back coming. Here. And sorry, I did that one under, so this one needs to go over. Under, over, under, over. Yeah, I got married last year and it was honestly the best day ever. You're gonna have a blast. But I would never need, I don't, never need to do it ever again. Of course, I hope that I don't have to. But I would totally redo it with the same guy and the same people and do it all over again if someone else planned it and someone else paid for it. Because it was so much fun, but the planning process, oh, I found it so stressful. How are you dealing with the planning process? Are you finding it stressful? I mean, I guess it can be a little stressful now with the COVID situation that's going on. 
You're having fun? Oh, I don't know. I, I spend my entire life for the last 12 years planning other people's hair and makeup and planning other artists' schedules and things. And it just, I don't know. My, my, my business takes up all of my time. So for me, it just didn't fit into my life very well, but I couldn't afford a planner because they're expensive. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Although I was worried about planning it locally because I know all the vendors really well and I didn't want anyone to be uh, offended by me, me not picking them. Although I probably would have got a hell of a lot of discounts. I did actually use two Vancouver vendors um, and they, they give me discounts. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Okay, so this one's going to come away from the face here. And the most fun part of beach waves is um, when you brush it all out. So satisfying. This looks so good. Okay, so Judy's got a big buildup of hair on my brush now. This does not happen with normal people. We've got a good back comb. We're going to give heat. Heat, 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 and then back off the face. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's amazing. You're so lucky. I got my, my makeup gifted and my hair gifted because my friend who was supposed to come and do my hair actually couldn't come last minute. That was a disaster. Luckily, we found someone amazing. But yeah. Every saving counts when you're paying for a wedding because that is it's expensive. All right, we're on to our last lot. I'm gonna pop our head back so we can see here. It is repetition, except we're just making sure that we're keeping that center part. All right, come on Cliff, where are you? Oh no, my favorite Cliff just broke. That is so sad. <sighs> If only it was just as easy as going to a store. Okay, whatever, I'm on the last section now anyway. <laughs> Sad moment. Okay, so we still want some more hair to go back off the face for volume. So we're taking another horizontal section. <laughs> and that's gonna go back. We can leave this one forward. I don't have my clip no more, but whatever. Judy doesn't mind having hair in her face. Okay, so this section, because this is gonna be our top section, we wanna make sure that the top here stays smooth. We wanna make sure that none of that back combing ends up on top, it is only underneath. So, hold the hair high to the sky again. We're gonna spray our texture spray, a little layer of hairspray. Just give that a good back comb. Whoops. And so the way that I just make sure that it doesn't go through, so if I want like mega like back comb, then I don't mind if it goes through, I hold the brush, uh, like trying to find a bit like that. If I, don't, if I don't want it to go all the way through, I just hold the brush like that. So it just kind of like grazes the underneath, whereas this goes all the way through and it's like nest, nest, nest. It's always fun trying to explain things. <laughs> Hi to the sky. <laughs> that's how you get your volume. You can't hold it to the to the side or down. That's not gonna work. High to the sky. Heat. Heat at the roots. <laughs> and wrap. And usually this section is like bigger than all the other ones that I've done because it's like you kind of just need the whole chunk to be sectioned, um, to be curled together so there's no separation. Um, so it's just going to take a little bit longer for the heat to pop through there. And slide it out. Wiggle, wiggle. Try not to burn yourself. This is, I normally have nails and they're like my little combs and my heat protectors. Come on. There we go. I don't have them anymore. That's okay, they were too expensive anyway. I'm not gonna get them again. Okay, now we're at the front. Pop our head back. 
we're almost there. And this is much faster when you're not teaching it. This is all fast when you're doing it at home. Oh, not at home. Oh my God. I'm at home. When you're doing it on a human. <laughs> Isolation insanity. Okay, where's my comb gone? This happen this happens to me normally. This isn't like this isn't isolation insanity. What happened to my comb? Hmm. Usually I have a team of people here to tell me. Hey, don't worry, I have another one somewhere. And I will find that one later. Where's my comb checker? Aha. Comb number two. This one will do. Oh, I just found it. It was hiding amongst a big ball of hair. Okay, so in, in case anything got messed up, just go on in and it does actually look like this got messed up a little bit. So just go on in and make sure your parting is still good. And I like really neat partings, although zigzag partings do also look really nice with um, this hairstyle too. I find that the really straight part looks very bohemian, whereas the zigzag part would um, create, keep that texture going on. <laughs> my dog is just looking at me so funnily right now okay cool so we're just going to do uh, two more sections on either side again it's going to be a diagonal slice here okay oh my gosh so much hair okay brush it up brush it up what is it it is high to the sky <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, puff powder, a little spritz. Get your back comb and comb. Back comb lightly so that it doesn't go through to the top of the hair. We don't want that. <laughs> Heat at the root. And we're curling these pieces back away from the face. And then these sections are smaller so they don't need quite as much hair, uh, heat. Spin it up. It's going to cool like that and these pieces are going to be really textured. Next one, exact same thing. Got to get rid of some of this, it's just getting in the way now. There is hair everywhere. That is the, the crazy thing about Judy. Just hair just sheds like crazy. And I think throughout the course of this lesson, she's gotten closer and closer to the camera. <laughs> Spray. That combing comb is on the floor now. <laughs> oh my gosh, Judy. Back comb, back comb, back comb. Hi to the sky. <laughs> Jester! <laughs> you are in the shot. <laughs> it is not, not your turn. <laughs> okay. And back home, back home, back home. Hi to the sky. Away from the face. Rope. <laughs> he, oh, he's a rescue dog. We got him in, um, from the south of Texas. And they think that he is a chihuahua mixed with a beagle, but he has blue eyes. So um, the blue eyes must either be like a defect in his genes or he has something else in him like, um, like husky, although he doesn't really look like husky, but maybe a tiny bit of husky, who knows? He is adorable, we love him, we got him. Um, we got him on Valentine's Day, actually. We picked him up in the back of a Walmart parking lot in the loading area in a, a little place just outside Seattle. It was super sketchy. They drove a ton of dogs from uh, the south of Texas all across America, dropping them all off at their new homes and rescuing any new ones that they found. Um, and yeah, when they opened up the truck, it stunk. There's just like tons of dogs in there, but I appreciate what they're doing. He's amazing, we love him. Last piece, woo! <laughs> and heat. 
yeah, it's crazy. The commitment, like the, the people who were driving the truck, like they would only stop at um, like campsites to take um, a shower or, or, um, or like go to the toilet and stuff. They were like barely stopping. There was a very tight schedule for them to drive. They drove two days to get to us and then they had more stops after us and then they had to drive back. Crazy. I feel like I would do something like that maybe in retirement. Could be a cool thing to do. All right, so if you're gonna do her makeup, you can leave her like, like this for a bit. Um, my is head sideways now. There we go. Perfect. Okay, if you're gonna do her makeup, do her makeup. I like to give it a little spritz, just to make sure that it's like gonna stay. And then when I take it out, I like to begin here and then deal with the top separately. Just make sure this is a good height. Perfect. I feel like I've got a screw loose. Don't focus on that. I do have a screw loose, there we go. Okay, um, so some products that I love are, again, the Moroccan oil, um, Oil treatment is handy to begin with. Uh, this is almost done. So I'm just gonna pour it all in my hands. Um, obviously, like, if you have someone who has, oh my God, it's like, it is like actually practically empty. Oop, that's too much. Um, if you have someone who has really fine hair, go easy on the oil. A little bit is fine just to like break everything up, but you don't wanna end up making their hair greasy because there is no turning back. Um, of course, if someone has like frizzy or curly hair, it just soaks it up. I'm just using my fingers first just to separate these pieces. I just find like using fingers, it's just like, it breaks it up more randomly. You can go from underneath a little bit to get those underneath sections. And of course, if you have someone that wants it really brushed out, just keep going for it. You can even use a paddle brush perhaps or um, a wide tooth comb to actually brush it out if they really want it brushed out. Um, it does create a different look. Like this look is very piecey, whereas if I actually take a brush and brush it out, it's much softer. Uh, just ask what your customer wants. I think we just lost Kristen. Oh, there you are, you're back again. So ask what your customer wants, you know, if they, but I would just say brush less to begin with, because if it's too tight, you can brush it more, but once you brush it too much, it's gone. Um, other products that I really, really love are uh, Puff Me Dry Texturizing Spray. So this is essentially like this puff powder product, but in a spray form. It's kind of like almost like dry shampoo type texture, but it's not a dry shampoo. And it just like gives nice volume, just like fluffs it up. There is one more product at the end that I really love, but I'll show you at the very end. It's the finishing touches. Okay. And now we're going to deal with the top. So just take all the clips out. When and so now is the time to kind of like re back comb anything if you need to fix it. Sometimes I find that the sections, like they're so separate that you need to actually like brush them a little bit and then re back comb them so that they don't separate. You'll see what I mean. So for example, I'm just gonna start brushing the top lightly. We'll separate with our fingers afterwards. But I'm just gonna brush the top lightly. And quite commonly I'll find like, this all looks good, but maybe when I brush this, there's like a big section here that's like separating, it's like flat here. Uh, which in that case, if something weird like that has happened, you can just take the area and just give it a little bit of a re -back comb. You don't need any extra product usually, it's just a matter of brushing it high to the sky. 
and giving it a little back comb again and it just eliminates that, that little separated bit. And on this side too, let's just see what happens here, brushing it. And again, it just kind of happens that there's just a weird, a weird bit here. Take the section and eliminate the, eliminate the break. Just by re-back combing a little and brushing. Okay, we can take a little bit of our oil again. Yeah, like it's a bit flat here for some reason. So, just back comb. And it is the primping at the end. That's why I called my other company Primp and Proper. Because it is the primping, the fiddling with everything at the end, with the tweaking, that makes all the difference. Okay, so she's looking crazy now. It's okay, we're gonna fix her. A little bit more of that oil. When you set hair, like you pin it on the top like this, some people's hair takes to the curl too much. So you don't always need to set the hair, especially if someone doesn't want it too curly. But you can see how those curls have really taken really well. Sometimes you don't want that. You want the top and the bottom curls to obviously match. So I'm just brushing out with my fingers. The oil is really smoothing out the hair for me. I'm gonna give it a little bit of um, texture spray. And this texture spray, I'll just show you from the side, it's pretty awesome. It just like gives extra volume and just like defines the pieces and like fluffs it up. Just love, I love this product. I really like this line. I only sell things that I really, really love because I'm such a terrible salesperson normally. Never managed to hold down a sales job. And you can even like take it like this and give it a spray and it'll just give it that volume on the bottom here. Go crazy. Okay, there's one more. Actually, there's two more products. Okay, if someone's hair is um, super frizzy. Oh, my husband is calling me. Give me a few minutes, hubby. Um, if someone's hair is super frizzy, this Kenra dry oil mist is amazing to kind of just like spray into the um, ends and it just tackles flyaways and frizziness. Oh, I just inhaled a bunch of it. Um, so yeah, this is a great product. Pretty pricey though. And then there's one product that I like to finish this all off with. And that is... Um, I'm also running low on this one too, but... Um, Kevin, yeah, Kevin Murphy. Kevin Murphy, let's see if I can get this. Hair Resort Beach Texturizer. It's like a, like a glue. It's almost like a glue texture. Um, and basically what you do is take a little bit and we're just gonna like define a few pieces and it's gonna make it look really beachy. Come on, I know there's some in here. Come on, right friend, there we go. Okay, you don't need too much because it is literally like glue. Now I'm not going to use it again. Okay, just popping in my fingers. It dries quickly, like this is, isn't oily. It doesn't leave the hair greasy, it actually dries really quickly. And basically all you're doing is taking a few sections and just defining just a couple of sections. You don't want it to look too defined, but just refine. Okay, check her from the front. We obviously need to check her from the front. You see how these pieces are separating? We just need to, well, she is Judy, so she's imperfect, but we just have to re back comb a couple bits to make sure that that doesn't stay like that. And I'll just re back comb the other side for her. And then we'll just check that the crown is okay. Nothing is 
frizzy or weird. So it's these little primping bits that make it perfect. And that's why people want to book you instead of somebody else. Because you have taken the time to make sure that she looks perfect. Boom, boom. Yeah. So a lot of people don't like this type of volume. You don't have to have that type of volume. You can easily, easily brush, brush it down. She just has a hell of a lot of hair, our Judy does. And of course, hairspray. Damn girl, I wish I had hair like that. That is nice. So there you have it. Beach way. <laughs> Did everybody have fun and learn something? Yeah, awesome. Perfect. Uh, oh, I'm such a perfectionist. It's not like she's actually going anywhere, but I just want her to look perfect. Just fine taking the time to do those little bits. Even if when she moves, she becomes, you know, not perfect later on, that's fine. But when you want to, when you show her the mirror, you want it to be perfect. Alrighty, you guys, I will send you the replay. I will send you my list of uh, mannequins and products and tools that I really love. And yeah, I hope um, you get to practice. And this is a very popular hairstyle for absolutely everybody. Brides, uh, grads, your everyday customer, your headshots, everything. So it is extremely valuable to be able to be fantastic at this. I hope you all have fun and good night.